um, when the meeting finishes between Putin and Rouhani. Now we have our editor at large, Ahmed al Barai, here in the studio with us. Hi, Ahmed. So the three major actors are meeting on Syria today. At the moment, Rouhani has met Erdogan. Now Putin is uh, speaking with Rouhani. Then we will see all three together. So um, these three major actors are all have highly important issues in Afrin. Why are these um, actors in such interest with that region? Well, first of all, Aicha, Afrin was a, an inevitable battle for Turkey because of the carelessness of Washington on that, or would you, you would rather say the reckless move of Washington to train and form a border force of the YPG that Turkey considers an offshoot of the PKK terror group here in Turkey. For Iran, it took a more or less a neutral stance toward Afrin and Ghouta, the uh, Turkey's operation in Afrin and the Russians' operation, the regime's operation in eastern Ghouta, because it seems that they want more of a non-interventionist policy of a Tehran at this particular time. First of all, because of the downing of the Israeli um, warplane in the south, that would lead to more escalation with the Americans. That's something Iran doesn't want. Also, they want Turkey to be on board of the political resolution of what's going on in Syria. That's why they uh, turned a blind eye to what's happening to the Afrin region. While for the Russians, they expect in return that Turkey is going to help them use its muscles against the rebel groups in Idlib to uh, convince them, to persuade them to give up and abandon their arms and their fight against the regime. So every major power has his a, an interest in the region. There is a kind of convergence of interest with the vacuum that the United States is leaving in the region. Also with the reckless and careless move that the uh, Trump administration is doing, a, like a completely disregarding the concerns of Turkey, a completely um, a spoiling all the communication channels with Russia, that will lead to more empowerment to these three major powers. Well, before asking whether they can find a middle ground, let's see a map of Syria to have a better understanding because Tel Rifat and the Manning Airport have become the major <coughs> discussion points. Why? Well, as you can see, this is Afrin, and you have Azaz, where Turkey is there. For Tel Rifat, it is a very important part and many military airplanes because it is used for by the YPG to transport the weapons from the south to the, from the uh, eastern part of the Euphrates River, from Membij, where you have the American presence, toward the uh, Afrin region. Now, for Turkey, it is a must. It is inevitable to take Tel Rifat. Whether they will be able to take it very soon, there seems to be, according to reports coming out from the region, that there are negotiations. So far, the Russians withdrew from Tel Rifat, but it's not clear whether the Syrian regime is going to withdraw whether the YPG are going to withdraw from the region as well, because it's very important for Turkey to go ahead to cut the corridor coming from the eastern part of the Euphrates River toward uh, Afrin and the other parts. Now, in, in addition to this, you have the other elephant in the room, which is Mambij, where you well, have the Americans. Before you come to Mambij, yes, let's listen to what the US president had to say lately. Yes, if we could hear what the US President Donald Trump had to say on Syria. As far as Syria is concerned, uh, our primary mission in terms of uh, that was getting rid of ISIS. We've almost completed that task, and we'll be making a decision very quickly in coordination with others in the area uh, as to what we'll do. Saudi Arabia. Uh, is uh, very interested in our decision. And I said, well, you know, you want us to say maybe you're going to have to pay. And that's the other major actor in the region. And he said the troops to be pulled out of Syria and also that Saudi Arabia should pay their bills. Do you see that happening? I mean, is that likely? I think it's a matter of, you know, like a humiliation to the mighty uh, army of the United States that Donald Trump, the businessman rather than the statesman, is saying, look, our business is done. We defeated Daesh. We have no interest to stay in Syria. But you, as Saudi Arabia, if you're ready to pay for our mercenaries who are going to stay in, the, in Syria for the sake 
of your interest, we're going to stay there just for the money you're going to pay. This is a kind of a humiliation to the United States. It's not what the United States tried to promote to the region, that they're here on the ground to promote democracy, to get rid of dictatorship, to eradicate radicalism. Now what, they're, what he's doing is, it's either I'm going to stay for the petrol, in the eastern part of the Euphrates River. It's not for the support of the YPG. It's not to say to uh, defeat or stop or rein in the uh, dictatorship of a, a Assad and his regime towards his own people, to stop the killing and the carnage of what's going on for more than seven years, to stop chemical use. It's only for his own interest, for his people's interest, which is something, a, a kind of a Machiavellian style that Donald Trump is doing. I don't feel that he's highly interested in withdrawing. It's a kind of blackmailing Saudi Arabia. Like, if you want me to stay, to reign in the hegemony of either Turkey or Iran in the region, I'm ready to stay there, but you have to pay for that. Well, thanks for that, Ahmed, and we'll be following the talks closely and watching talking about the future of Syria here in the studio. There's another twist in the poisoning of the former Russian spy. Russia has taken the route to the world's chemical weapons.